Hey everyone, so today we're going to be talking about three mistakes that will kill your SAT score. So number one is skimming reading passages, right? The aim here is for comprehension, right? Instead of skimming the reading passages, trying to get through the questions faster, you should aim to actually understand what you're reading, right? Because there's two variables here. Being able to comprehend the text, right? Like what the text actually says and the main ideas and all that, and also answering the question. Right, so deriving what the question says, comparing with your answer choices, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The SAT is mainly testing if you can answer the question, not reading comprehension. Right, so stop introducing a variable of not understanding the text when it's right there in front of you to the equation. Right, you're putting yourself at a big disadvantage for absolutely no reason. And another thing you have to realize is that you have the time. Right, on the SAT, you have the time to just do one active read. Right? So if you do one active read, you can be a little slow, but you'll understand everything you read, right? Instead of seeing it in five, 10 seconds and not understanding what you're reading. You might also miss key details and make silly mistakes as an example. So for this question here, right? Which choice most logically completes the text? If you skip down to this bottom part, trying to fill out uh, this text by just reading the conclusion and seeing what might fit there, indeed the two consensus uh, reported some accounts of vertebrae, plant, and algae species suggesting that what? Well, if you read all these answer choices, if you didn't read the context, none of these would really make sense, right? Because you're looking for a similarity, but all of these talk about differences. But if you looked at the context here, you can see that there's actually some major disparities in terms of what the census actually saw, right? So this, this one group had 17,000, which was nearly double the other group, and it says it was only uh, partly attributable to the description of new vertebrate species. So we know it can't be A. And then this here is interesting. It says right here, right? This is right before that end conclusion that you might have skipped to is this important detail. Another factor is the morphological variability of microorganisms is poorly understood uh, compared to the vertebrae, yada, yada, yada. So there's uncertainty. And so uncertainty about how to evaluate those microorganisms and therefore, the way that researchers evaluate them might differ. Therefore, a really easy way to just evaluate this is that the group that reported more of these species interpreted the microorganism differently. Therefore, the answer here will be B. All right, number two is intense studying right before the test. You have to keep your brain well rested. It's kind of funny because right before the test, supposedly you're watching a video about the SAT, right? But the thing is, what I mean by intense studying is basically where you're sitting there trying to memorize a bunch of formulas, memorize a bunch of concepts, grind 100 practice problems a day, just something that is just so outrageous. I am a big advocate for staying warm. If you haven't seen our 10 best hacks for getting 100 plus points on your SAT, make sure you check that out because they go more into staying warm the morning of the exam with practice questions. Um, but if you intensely study doing those hundreds of problems a day, I think that's going to help you. Um, that will create fatigue in your brain, right? That's going to make it very difficult for you to focus on test day because maybe you're running on two hours of sleep, right? You're not cooking with two hours of sleep. Um, so yeah, that last minute cram is not going to help you as much than getting a good night's rest, uh, eating the right foods and being in the right mindset. Number three is doing complex math for absolutely no reason. Right, so the math section of the SAT goes up to algebra two. If you see this example problem, maybe pause the video or meet me or something and try and look for the shortcut because there's always a shortcut to SAT problems. All right, well, the long way or the quote unquote long way is to, well, first off, interpret the questions. We have a quadratic function. We've got two points and we need to find T, which is a constant and they want the value of T, right? We can see here that these two values, zero, zero and T comma zero are the X intercepts. So to find the X intercepts, we just set H of X equal to zero. So if we set this equal to zero, we can add 32 on both sides, divide by two, 16, take the square root of both sides, we get four, and then four equals x minus four, so x equals eight. So that's one way you can do it to find the answer of eight. But if you wrote that on paper, that might take you 30 seconds. Versus if you used five seconds by just plugging it into Desmos, right? This will take you five seconds to do, five seconds to do, literally. And then look for the intersection point, eight zero, boom. Literally five seconds, you got your answer right there. Now, for some of you, you might be like, okay, I just did it in my head, so what was the point of using Desmos? That is until you run into a problem like this, right? A little more complex example. Well, now you can't do this mentally in your head. 
So pause the video, same thing, try and solve it, look for the shortcut, right? So the way you're going to do this here is if you're in the long way, obviously you would first off find the shortcut here is that these two are both the same lines because if you divide 24x plus 21y equals 27 by 3, you get the equation on top. And therefore, when you're trying to find one of these coordinate points, you just need that coordinate point to lie on 8x plus 7y equals 9, right? So the long way you would do this is essentially substitution and distributive property, right? So it's just, it's a long process, essentially. But the quick way using Desmos is you recognize that R is sort of the, it's existent in all of these uh, variables, right? So it's existent in X as well as Y. And therefore, it doesn't really matter what R is because it can be any real number, right? So you'd be one, and it'd be the same, or it could be two, it'd be the same. And so what we could do here is just go into Desmos, we plug in 8x plus 7y equals 9, and then what you would do here is take one minute to plug all of the coordinate points here. I just did one of them because that was the answer. Uh, so you can see we plug this in right here, we just set a slider, r equals 1, and we can see that that intersects right at the point, and since we know, we can use our logic here with the shortcut, therefore a is our answer. So yeah, that wraps it up for our three common mistakes that will kill your SAT score. Make sure you guys check out our 10 best hacks to increase your SAT score by 100 plus points and good luck on your SAT.